so you're going to teach us how to harvest certain herbs. That's right, that's right. Well, this is the time of year when your herbs are definitely ready to mm -hmm. harvest. Of course, you can harvest them all through the summer, some okay. of them, but now we're going to sort of wind it up. Let's and wind so it up. And so show how the different types of you know herbs we're going to use yes. that are good for cooking, and then we're going to also show the different techniques for okay. preservation. Okay, and I think we're going to start with basil. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, here's the basil plant that we're going to demonstrate how to harvest. Uh, this is midsummer, late summer, so we're not going to take the whole plant, but because basil is an annual, at the end of the growing season, you do need to take the whole plant, or you can, and hang it up in a dark, kind of hot place to dry. But right now, we're just going to come down here and cut it a little bit above where it's got some, some growth that can come, come on back out. Okay, that's one. We're going to get a couple here or more. Find me a good branch here. There's a good one. Okay, I'm gonna do that one. And then I'm gonna do one more. I think I'm gonna get right back here. Okay, now when you get that done, you can pull these leaves off if you want to and put those like on a piece of uh, newspaper or something to dry them individually, but this is the best way for me to do it. And then I have me a rubber band to go around the end of the stems. And rubber bands are excellent for this because as the stems dry, they kind of contract. So you don't want them all falling down in your attic or wherever you have it drying. So when you get this done, then you're ready to put it in a dark, you know, hot, dry place in the attic, you know, hanging on a nail from a rafter or something like that. After several days in a hot, dry, dark place, our basil bunch that we gathered from the garden is ready to be removed from the stems and put in a nice little container. You can use a, recycle your old spice jars and herb jars like we've done here, or you can use something really nice like this. So what we do is we pull up a stem, and you might want to do this outside or on a porch because these things are going to make a mess. But see, we just go down the stem, pull the leaves off, and now what you want to do is leave them whole if you can, because that uh, preserves the flavor, and you crumble them right before you put them in whatever you're cooking. So we're going to just strip these off, get most of it anyway. See, I told you we're going to make a mess, but boy, you're going to smell good. Boy, we have a nice little group of dried basil here. Oh, look at that. We could put some in this one too, because I think we're going to fill this little jar up. But you're going to store these in a dark, cool place. You don't want to put them in the sunlight, and that should stay at least for a, a year and have a lot of flavor. I put the year and the name of the herb on the jar. We have a really nice thyme plant here that I'm fishing to demonstrate how to harvest. And it's really, really compact and really nice. And it doesn't hurt to trim back a quite a bit at this time of year. But what I want to do is come in here and cut a little handful. And because thyme has such tiny, tiny little aggravating leaves, you know, the way I do it, you can put it off on newspaper and dry the branches individually like that but it's really hard to pull all these leaves off and dry them individually. It's a lot easier to get them dry and then crunch them, crunch them off. So what we're gonna do is just get like a little bundle of this, and then we're gonna get a rubber band and put around the stems. Rubber bands are excellent for this, better than string or rope or something, because as the herbs dry, these stems are gonna contract and the, the rubber band will contract with them and you won't have them falling down. So now, you're ready to put this um, in a dark, hot, dry place so that it can dry in your attic or in a dark room or something like their closet. And then in a few weeks or less, depending on how hot your room is, you'll be ready to go to the next step. Our thyme is good and dry now, so it's time to do something with the thyme. And we have held it, had it up on a little rubber band, holding it like in a little bundle up in a hot, dry place. So now we're ready to remove these tiny little leaves as best we can, which is a lot easier when this stuff is dry than trying to do it when it's fresh. 
Oh yeah, see that's working really good. You get all these tiny little leaves and they're really, really aromatic. Try to keep them, you know, whole best you can, which they look like they're coming off pretty good. And one thing you can do uh, that I like to do with my herb, my little branches, you know, when I get them all off, I put them in my, like if we're outside with a fire late in the fall, throw the little branches on your little fire and it really smells good. So keep all of your old uh, herb branches once you've taken all the leaves off. So try to keep them whole, like I say, and then <clears throat> when you get ready to use them in your cooking, you can crunch them up real fine then. And it'll keep their flavor better if you can do that. So all right, we have got quite a little bit here. Nice little jar, you can put them in. You can recycle your herb or spice jars or little fruit jars or little jelly jars. But just make sure it's got a tight fitting lid <clears throat> and store it in a kind of cool and dark place, away from heat and away from light. All right, we have a really nice uh, sage plant here and sage has such large leaves. It's one of the only herbs that have these really large, fleshy, thick leaves. So we're gonna dry it a little bit differently than some of the other herbs that you can bundle together with a rubber band. So because it has such thick leaves, we're going to get a branch and we're going to, and of course this is dirty, so we need to probably wash those off. So I'm gonna, all in my pan, I'm gonna use some of these upper leaves for what we're wanting to demonstrate. But so you take the individual leaves, pinch them off, and then put them in a cookie sheet with like a paper towel or, or some kind of newspaper or some other absorbent paper. And this works really, really well for sage because it is so very thick. So then you can put your tray in a you know, hot, dark room or closet or up in the attic or somewhere. And then you're, or you need a bigger, you need a bigger cookie tray probably <laughs> than this one. But this works really well for sage. After a few days in a hot, dry, and dark place, these sage leaves are ready to go to the next step and get them stored. Now, I brought some of sage leaves that I had from last year, and they're still very pungent. And the trick is that you don't crumble the leaves. You keep them whole. And I'm gonna pinch these stems off because they just take up space that that's, uh, could be used for the leaves. So I just put them in a little jar, a little decorative jar of some sort, and then I usually uh, label them with the name of the herb and the year so that I know after a while, you know, I need to start eating them up pretty quick because I would say a year for most of these herbs. Some of them last longer. Sage will keep its flavor for a long, long time. So there we go. Nice little jar. Keep it airtight, put it in a place out of the sun and preferably cool and dark. We have this really nice parsley plant here, but I'm gonna tell you, parsley does not dry and keep its flavor really well. So the way that we're gonna preserve this is freezing. Cilantro is another herb that's better frozen than dried, so it keeps its flavor better. And chives is that way as well. So we're gonna cut a few leaves and then we're gonna freeze them. Now, one thing that I probably should mention is sometimes your herbs are dirty. So if they are, you probably need to wash them off, you know, before they're dried or frozen, but always make sure they're good and dry. You know, all the moisture's gone. They're good and air dried before you either freeze them or dry them. So, okay, we're ready. We got our parsley ready to freeze. When you get ready to use it, you pull it out while it's still frozen Take some of the stems off if you've got some big stems, and then while it's frozen, you just chop it up. And you see with it being frozen, it chops up really easily. So that's the way you do parsley, and it holds its color as you can see. You know, so it looks like fresh parsley. So there you're gonna fool all of your friends and neighbors, and they're gonna say, how did you have fresh parsley in the wintertime? We have a really nice rosemary plant here, and uh, I'm going to harvest some of this to dry, but actually rosemary is one of the few herbs that stays evergreen year round. So you can harvest fresh uh, rosemary any time of year, 
but if you don't want to have to run out to the garden in the snow or the cold, you can dry this. And the way we're going to do it is we're just going to cut a few sprigs. And then we're going to bundle them together like this and get a rubber band. Rubber bands are good because they contract as the stems contract when they dry. Otherwise, you're going to have little fallen branches all over everywhere. And then you're going to hang this up in an attic or dark closet. The trick is to do it in a hot, dry place. And then it will, in a few weeks or less, it will be ready to go to the next step. Because rosemary is such an aromatic herb, it holds its, its uh, flavor really well when it's dried. So we have some big stems here, and we're going to do them opposite the way they're on the stem. See how they'll come off real easy that way? Keep them whole as much as you can. Of course, it's like, you know, you're going to crumble them up really good before you put them in whatever you're cooking, because if you don't, it's going to feel like you got a mouthful of pine needles because they're really, really coarse and tough. So you want to chop them up really good. Oh yeah, boy, it smells real good. I love rosemary. It's got a really, really strong smell. It's good in bread. It's good to put it on uh, tenderloin when you bake it or make some uh, dipping oil, flavored oil, all kind of wonderful things you can do with rosemary. It's a great bee plant. So here we go, we've got quite a bit. So we're gonna keep the little leaves and the needles whole and put it in a nice little jar with a tight fitting lid and keep it in a dark, dry place. Here we have two types of oregano. The one on my right is not flowering, it's more prostrate and easily harvested in this type of situation, but this one on my left is already blooming. And so you're thinking, well, can I harvest that? Well, yeah, you definitely can. You know, it's a little bit challenging because you probably don't want dried flowers in your dried leaves when you get to that point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some of these off and then I'm gonna cut the flowers off so you won't have to deal with that later when they're dry. Oregano is a great plant. It smells so good. It's good in pizza and all kind of wonderful dishes. Okay, here we go. Ooh, it smells good. Well, we got these, and you see I've got a bunch. Well, actually, if I cut all the flowers off, I'm not going to have any foliage. So maybe I need to get a few more here. Yeah, that's a little better. So we'll have some to dry. So, okay. I'm gonna cut these big old flower heads off. And let's see what we got left. Scissors sometimes work better than these nippers. There we go. Now, now we got a good little bunch of uh, oregano. And we're gonna have a good little pile of dry leaves when we get to that point. Then, I'm going to take a rubber band and pull it around the stems to hold them real secure as they dry so the stems won't fall out of the rubber band. If you did that with a, a string or some rope or something, they might fall down as, they, as the stems shrink. So now you're ready to hang this up in a dark, hot place. And before long, you'll be ready to get your little dry leaves and start cooking. Now our oregano is ready to be taken off a stem and put in a container for storage. It's good and dry, it's been in a hot, dry and, and dark place. And so, and we removed the blooms when we took it out of the garden. This one was blooming, so we went ahead and cut those blooms off. So now we're ready to just strip the leaves <coughs> off the stems. And it's real easy to do when it's good, crispy, dry. And try not to mash up the leaves too much because if you notice, it smells really good and when you're crushing them up, you're releasing all of those volatile oils into the atmosphere and they're not in the leaves anymore. So try to keep the leaves fairly intact when you strip them off. So we just keep pulling the leaves off. And in milder climates, oregano can stay fairly evergreen through the winter. I think it's classified more like a semi-evergreen depending on what uh, climatic zone you're in. 
here where we live, it can look sort of bad in the winter time, but you probably could still do a little harvesting. So here we go. We got a good little bunch of leaves here. And I'm doing pretty good trying to keep them fairly intact. Now we're going to use a nice little pretty decorative jar. You can use old uh, herb or spice jars, whatever you have. Just make sure it's got a real tight fitting lid. And then you're ready to cook some spaghetti or whatever, pizza. So here we go. Needs to be airtight, good tight lid, and a, a dry place, cool place out of the sun. All right, Doc, so you showed us different ways to harvest and dry your right. herbs. So now let's talk about using a dehydrator to do that. Yeah, we didn't talk about that, did we? Okay. We talked about just tying them up in bundles or putting right. them in trays on paper towels or something. But if you have a dehydrator, mm -hmm. it is a great way to dry small batches of, of herbs. Okay. And it comes in, this one I have, it's got several trays. You know, it's got like two, four, five trays. The heating element's down here, so you have to swap the trays out as the day goes on. But it's a great way to dry things real quickly, you know, inside, and you don't have to worry about getting up in the attic or anything like that. Small batches is Small good. Small batches, okay. Yeah. All right. And of course, you can always use fresh herbs, always, you know, during the growing season. So, you know, you can just bundle them up like this, and there's mm -hmm. ways to keep them fresh inside and you can put them what I do is I go out and I'll gather you know some herbs that I think I'm going to be using for cooking in the next week and I'll put them in a little uh, like a vase oh, okay. you know like make a bouquet right. and then I just keep them on my kitchen counter and they'll stay fresh pretty much all week and then that way you've got them right there real handy you know when you're cooking and fresh so That's you don't have idea. to go back to the okay. back garden to get them you right. know walk all that far and uh, <clears throat> there's other ways, you know, to, to preserve them. You can put them in oil, mm -hmm. you know, preserve, and they need to be dry if you do that. They don't, you don't want to put green herbs in oil. Okay, so uh, what kind of oil are we talking about? Well, whatever you want, okay. canola, uh, olive, you know, whatever kind of oil you cook with okay. is what I, I just use canola. Okay. You know, I like olive oil too, but, you know, but again, don't put them in there fresh because you may be some bacteria and other gotcha. things, okay. or you can uh, do herbal vinegars. You know, and they can be fresh in herbal vinegar because it's so acidic, uh, it's going to kill whatever's in there. Okay. So there's no, no problem with that. Okay. Now, how much oil are we talking about? How much of the vinegar are we talking about? Just well, small amount? Well, uh, that's a whole no, other subject. Whole, okay, a whole other subject. Okay. <laughs> it All depends right. on the herb. It depends on what you're going to use it for. So I like to just experiment. Okay. And Got that's it. what I'd recommend to cooks is just try things and experiment because herbs are a lot of fun. Okay. Got a lot it. of different textures and a lot of different flavors. So you could do it that way. Let's say you can do the oil and the vinegar. Um, freeze them. You know, yeah. you can freeze some of the herbs, and, it, and mostly people dry them. And when you use them fresh, yeah. if you're like me, <clears throat> I, I tend to cut my fingers. <laughs> so I just chopped the end of my thumb off about three weeks ago. <laughs> but I found this little dude, and it's called an herb mill. And I like it because you can do it left-handed. The little, this little gizmo will swap when you pop it it's open. Cool. Yeah. So it's left or right-handed. Right. So that works good for me. So I like it for the, the bigger kind of leaves. The smaller leaves kind of want to just fall through. So you have to be careful chopping those fresh ones up with your knife because you will cut your fingers off. Yeah, you got to be careful. All right, so you yeah. poke her down in there. Okay, in there. All right. And I just do it right over what I'm cooking. You know, if I'm like cooking spaghetti or whatever. I think yeah, I got too to many. get it working in there. Oh, yeah. I know, I got too much in there. Oh, I think I good. choked it up. It's coming out a little bit. Oh, yeah, here we go. There it goes. Yeah, there, it goes. there we go. That shreds it up. And then you're not going to cut your fingers. There we go. All right, there it is. Yeah, and you go backwards and then forwards yeah. again. See that? There? Worked. Yeah, that worked pretty good when you Yeah, backwards. yeah, so I'm, I like this little thing. Okay. And you could order it online probably, you know, or what's called a herb mill. Herb and I'm sure there's other kinds out there that sure. you could use. So. And you do this right over the food? I do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's good. Like if I'm doing spaghetti or, you know, basil will go with anything that's yeah, got a tomato like in it. Yeah, definitely you know, love basil. Really good, yeah. Doc, this has been so good. It smells so good in it here. It does. Yeah. I wish the audience could smell yeah. it, you know, because we'd just be so all. <gasps> yeah, this has been so good. So thank you so much. We You're appreciate welcome. that much. It's been fun, yeah. as always. Yes, as always. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.